Hello everyone, my name is Mrs. Asma. I will be your science teacher for the next two homeschool videos. Lesson 4 We are surrounded by living organisms as plants and animals and non-living things as water, soil and air. Living organisms surrounding us have common properties and characteristics such as nutrition, respiration, excretion, motion, sensation, and reproduction. The body of the living organism consists of systems, and each system consists of a group of organs. The human body is made up of a number of systems. Each system performs a certain function. Starting with the digestive system, the digest and absorbs food and respiratory system that carries out the process of breathing or respiration process. Remember that the purpose of the digestive system is to absorb nutrients from food and the purpose of respiratory system is to take in oxygen from air. Circulatory system It carries out the transport function where it distributes the digested food and oxygen all over the body cells. Remember the nutrients and oxygen absorbed by the respiratory and digestive system? So now it's the circulatory system turn to distribute them all over the body cells to each cell in our body. And finally, the nervous system. It lets us have the ability to feel, hear, see, smell, and taste. Remember, the digestive system and respiratory system are working together to get energy from food and breathing. Starting with the digestive system. It is a system responsible for breaking down food into small parts to enable the body cells to use them in getting energy. And we call it the digestion process. It is the process of breaking down food and changing it into chemical substances that the body absorbs and uses them in getting energy and growth. It consists of number one, mouse, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and anus. The digestive canal starts with mouse opening and ends with anus opening. Starting with the mouse, the digestion begins in the mouse, where the teeth break down and crush food in the mouth during chewing, and the tongue mixes food with saliva to help in food swallowing, and saliva is a liquid substance that contains digestive enzymes that help the digestion of some types of food where it digests starch into sugar. It facilitates the swallowing of food. Esophagus. The throat or pharynx pushes the food into the esophagus. It is a long muscular tube connecting to stomach. And the function is to move the body, the food down into the stomach. The stomach. It's a muscular organ, and muscular means muscle. So the stomach is like a muscle organ. It mixes food with acid and digested and digestive enzymes uh, or digestive juices found in it to change the food into soupy liquid. And of course, this process takes few hours. Then the muscles of the stomach move the food into a long winding tube called small intestine. The small intestine is a long winding tube as it lens is more than 6 meters long. But it coils. It coils. Food is broken down into simple nutrition in the small intestine, where pancreas and liver secrete juices that flow into the small intestine. These juices help the breaking down of food into nutrients. So here, in the small intestine, 
the nutrients are absorbed by the blood. into tiny blood vessels and reach the blood and the blood carries the nutrients to all parts of the body as we said before so the function of the small intestine is to complete the digestion of different types of food and absorb the nutrients or digested food and the body does not benefit from some parts of food known as undigested materials that flow into the large intestine so here in the small intestine, the end of the digestion process, and then the, the leftovers of food or the, the waste uh, part of food that we, the, the body doesn't need, it should be expelled outside the body through the large intestine. The large intestine is a tube that starts from the end of the small intestine and ends with the anus and its function to absorb water from the undigested materials so they become solid wastes that become out through the anus it should be expelled out the body or pulled outside the body so how to keep our digestive system healthy number one Chew the food well. 2. Don't eat much fast food and eat healthy food. Number 3. Drink a lot amount of water. Now with the respiratory system. Have you ever noticed that during sitting your breath slows down while during running your breath quickens? Like getting nutrients from food, getting oxygen gas from the air is a complex process that depends on many organs working together to get the needed energy. Any living organism respires to get oxygen gas, which is necessary to burn the digested food to get the needed energy for all the body activities. So the respiratory system is a system responsible for breathing or respiration. The respiratory system supplies the body with oxygen gas and gets rid of carbon dioxide gas through the respiration process. Respiration process. It is the process of entering the air carrying oxygen into the body and pushing the air carrying carbon dioxide out of the body. The structure of the respiratory system. It consists of nose, pharynx or throat, trachea, two lungs, and diaphragm. So, during the respiration process, it consists of two main types. First, inhalation, where oxygen, we're getting in oxygen, and exhalation, where we expelled out the carbon dioxide. So, how does the respiratory system works. During inhalation, air enters through the nose and mouth, then down the throat. Then the air passes through the trachea into the two lungs, which fill up with air like two balloons. Inside the lungs, the trachea is branched into two tubes known as two bronchi that in turn divided into smaller and smaller tubes that look like the branches of a tree, known as bronchioles. At the end of these tubes, there are little sacs surrounded by blood vessels, known as air sacs or alveoli, that extract oxygen gas from the air inside the blood vessels. Oxygen moves into the blood stream, then it can be carried around the body to help other organs and systems to work. So our bodies need oxygen in order to do their function. And we get oxygen gas from the air around us all the time. We cannot store extra oxygen in our bodies, so we must constantly take a new oxygen. So how does 
the respiratory system get oxygen to the body cells. Oxygen enters the lungs during inhalation, then the blood transfers oxygen to all the body cells. As we can see, inhalation and exhalation process. Let's explain. Respiration process include two process which are inhalation process or breathe in and exhalation process breathe out inhalation and exhalation are directed by a large muscle of the base of the ribs called the diaphragm so in inhalation the type of air is oxygen and enters the lungs in exhalation process, the type of air is carbon dioxide gas and it's expelled out, the out of the lungs. The diaphragm muscle in inhalation process shrinks and moves downward, while in exhalation the diaphragm muscle expands or relaxes and move, moves upward. The size of chest during inhalation, of course, it increases or enlarges, while in exhalation, the opposite, the size of chest decreases or becomes narrow. Note, the carbon dioxide gas which is produced during respiration process is a waste product. What does it mean? It means that this gas is harmful to our body, so we have to expel it out during exhalation and now how to keep our respiratory system healthy first breathing clean air two eat fruits rich in vitamin c such as orange and guava finally avoid smoking and smoking areas because it leads to cancer and causing death so um, scientific term uh, we have this uh, uh, words so let's check your understanding number one it mixes food with acid and digestive juices if you said it was the stomach then you're right number two it changes starch into sugar I hope you get it right this time it's the saliva. If you got it, I'm very proud of you. It absorbs water from the undigested material. The, the large intestine. Number four. It completes the digestion of different types of food. This is a hard one, but I'm, I believe in you. It's the small intestine. They break down and crash food during chewing. It's very obvious. The teeth. It mixes food with saliva. The tongue. It's a very obvious, very, very obvious too. It moves the food down into the stomach. And finally, at last, the esophagus. Uh, good job if you did them all right, actually. Great job. True or false? During inhalation, the diaphragm muscle relaxes and moves downward. Number one. During inhalation, the diaphragm muscle relaxes and moves downward. I hope you got it right. Go wrong. Why? Because it's not. It's not it doesn't relax. It uh, exactly it, it contacts number two respiration process is the process by which the human obtains energy from burning of the digested food no it's wrong it's not respiration it's digested digestion exactly complete number one respiration process includes Inhalation and exhalation. Exactly. 
respiration process is a process of entering the air carrying which gas oxygen into the body and pushing the air carrying and pushing carbon dioxide well done pushing carbon dioxide out of the body and now how fish breathe can you stay and breathe under water all the time no can fish stay and breathe under water all the time yes exactly human can breathe and survive on land but not under the water while fish can breathe and survive under water but not on land adaptation of fish to breathe under water so how fish actually can breathe under water fish have gills to breathe instead of the lungs in human gills are found on the sides of a fish's head under bony flaps that have the ability to open and close. Water enters the mouth of the fish and passes across the gills. Then blood vessels in the gills carry oxygen gas to the rest of the body. Fish use gills to take oxygen gas out of the water and release carbon dioxide gas. So gills are unique structural adaptation that allow fish to live and breathe under water. Note, water pollution impacts the fish that live nearby, so fish need clean water to survive, as we need to breathe clean air to stay healthy. And now, check your understanding. Compare between the human respiratory system and the fish respiratory system using these words. In the similarities, the human respiratory system Inhale which gas? Oxygen. So both fish and human inhale oxygen gas while they exhale? Carbon dioxide. Well done. So carry oxygen gas to all the body parts. And differences. Humans have? Humans have the lungs to inhale oxygen gas from? From air. Exactly. While fish have while fish have gills to inhale oxygen gas from from uh, water. No. True or false? The importance of gills to fish is like that of lungs to humans. Of course. Oxygen gas reaches only parts of the fish body through the blood vessels present in its gills. Yes. Carbon dioxide gas is harmful for both fish and human? Yes. Great job. Humans change the environment. What happens if environments continue to change? If change occurs slowly, organisms have time to adapt over many generations. While human activities often rapidly changes ecosystems over days or years, and these rapid changes can cause many organisms to move, disappear, die, or even become extinct. An extinct means that a living organism is no longer exist on Earth. Organisms are adapted to the ecosystems in which they live, however that ecosystem may change. And that means, in our ecosystem, there is many of plants and animals that live there, while when humans do many activities in this ecosystem and making changes to this ecosystem it's so rapid so it's too fast so uh, living organisms have to adapt fast as well so they can survive so what happens if they cannot adapt so if they are if they cannot adapt as fast as the changes happen, so they are gonna die. And if the whole species dies, it becomes instinct.
myself starting with natural changes. First, change in temperature. As you can see, the temperature changes over time. Number two, the amount of rainfall from seasons. Three, extreme weather events such as strong winds. Four, wildfires. And finally, floods. Changing the nature of plants that are available for food, causing increases or decreases in predators and prey population. And now, humans change the environment. One, cutting down forest, and we call it deforestation. Farming and clearing lands. Three, building communities instead of grassland. So if we have any living organism that live before in this grassland, so they don't exist anymore because they have to survive. So they should move to another place to find food and water and shelter. And if they cannot adapt so fast to find a new place, so they're gonna die. Introducing plants and animals that never were part of the ecosystem. Five, air pollution caused by the exhaust from cars and some factories. Six, water pollution due to bad habits such as throwing waste materials in waterways. Changes resulted from human activities can cause the disappearance of plants and animals that once lived in an environment. Air, water and soil get polluted as a result of human activities. Plants and animals can survive. Some animals can survive by moving to another ecosystem to find what they need. Plants depend on their seeds to land in a better place for them to survive and grow. Humans are also affected by human activities, such as damage of lungs, asthma, breathing difficulties, and heart diseases. Air pollution, smog, makes the human hard to breathe. Water pollution makes the human hard to find clean drinking water. Air, water, and soil pollution make the crops cannot grow. People live in big cities, must change their lifestyle to decrease air pollution. The role of human to help restore ecosystem. First, by replanting clear forests, removing the pollutants of air and water, and preserving plants and animals in these ecosystems. Such horrible human activities destroy our beloved planet. And now STEM in action. But first, let me introduce you the word STEM. What does it STEM mean? The letter S stands for science, and letter T stands for technology, letter E stands for engineering, and letter M stands for mathematics. So what does it mean? It means if you want to do any technology, so you, will, you have to be aware of science, and you should do engineering to do this technology. And of course, when you are going to make engineering, you should use mathematics. Okay, back to the lesson. We are going to talk about amphibians. And let me remind you, when we classify animals into groups, we said that we have mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. And we talked about reptiles when we were talking about this, the uh, spirit animal lizard and the uh, panther chameleon. And now we are going to talk about amphibians. Amphibians are small animals, such as frogs, toads, and salamanders. 
they can live in moist environments like rainforests, streams, and ponds. Like humans, adult amphibians can breathe using lungs when they are on land, but they can also take in oxygen from water. The structural adaptation of amphibians to live in wet environments is that they breathe in or respire through their lungs and skin to adapt to live on land and in water. Breathe in through lungs. On land, amphibians inhale oxygen gas from air through their lungs. Why? The bodies of amphibians are covered with skin that allows water and gases to pass through so they can absorb or extract oxygen directly from water. So with amphibians, they are different from fish. They don't have gills, but they can extract or absorb oxygen from water through their skin. Amphibians need clean water and air to stay healthy because they are very sensitive to the effect of air pollution, water pollution, viruses that can travel through water. Imagine if frogs are living in a pond and this pond is polluted. So, of course, when they are breathing in oxygen and um, taking this pollution from water, so, of course, it's going to affect their health and leads to death. The role of scientists to protect many types of amphibians from extinction, scientists or biologists are working to save many types of amphibians from extinction, like the golden frog. So by studying how many amphibians breathe in air and water, factors cause air and water pollution that affect the life of amphibians, and studying what makes these animals sick in the environment. How do people help in protection of amphibians from extinction? Clean air and water is important for amphibians, so people should avoid throwing waste materials in water and dispose of chemicals in a correct way helps to avoid water pollution. Note, 90 species of amphibians have become extinct in the last 20 years. in addition to 124 other endangered species.